So this is a new sketch. What we're going to do is we're going to play the buzzer, which we had set up in the previous video. We're going to play this buzzer for a certain number of uh, iterations of the loop and also a certain number of uh, seconds. So we're going to do two different methods. Okay. So we begin with a little comment here. I'll call this sketch buzzer duration. All right. Turns on the piezo buzzer uh, with a certain number of loops and amount of time. So the global is buzzer pin, A0, and again, the buzzer pin is plugged into the piezo buzzer, not audio transducer, but the buzzer is plugged into um, A0. The positive goes into A0, and the negative goes into ground. Okay. Uh, I don't think we're going to print anything to the serial monitor, but in case we do, that this line is here, and then we set the buzzer pin to output mode. Right. Um, and then the loop we're going to call the first function is going to be method one. All right, so let's take a look at what method one gives us. Okay, this is a this is another while loop here, and this is this we're going to use a counting variable to count the number of loops that we want it to run. Okay, so we set counter equal to zero. This is called initializing the variable. Okay. It creates and initializes all in the same step. And so while this conditional expression is true, then the stuff inside these curly braces will run. So while the counter is less than 10,000, and it seems like a pretty big number, but you'll be surprised how fast even the slow Arduino can go. Okay, It's going to turn on the buzzer pin, right? and it's going to count. Um, we're going to increase the counter by one or we could if we wanted to use you know very um, a traditional way we could say counter equals counter plus one now in math class this looks ridiculous right x does not equal x plus one x equals x counter equals counter but this is not math class this is computer programming and so what this says is that the new counter variable is equal to the previous counter variable or the old counter variable plus a value in this case plus one we're going to iterate it by one we're going to increase counter by one every loop so counter begins at zero so this is the current value and so the new value is equal to the current value which is zero plus one so now the new value is, is one so it does that it gets to this curly brace and where does the curly brace this is the end curly brace so where does it uh, begin it begins up here so it's going to bounce back up to here now it's going to check to see if counter is in fact less than 10,000 and sure enough one is less than 10,000 so it's going to do it again it's going to turn the buzzer on high which is already on so it's just going to continue to make a noise it's going to keep doing this until the counter reaches 10,000 at that point it's going to uh, this this conditional statement is no longer going to be true so when counter reaches 10,000 10,000 is not less than 10,000 Okay. And so it's going to now not run this, and instead it's going to go to here and kick on to the next line, which will send the buzzer pin low, which turns it off. Now, as discussed in the previous, um, in the previous video, we have this while true statement, which pauses this, this um, method, part, sorry, this method one function, pauses this function forever. So it never reaches, it never returns back to the loop function. It comes to here and stops forever. Be really careful when you use this in a, in a program. Sometimes it will make your robot stop when you don't want it to, and it can't ever start back again because of this while true statement. So if we run the code, you hear it come on for a little tiny blip. So that blip represents 10,000 cycles or 10,000 loops of the while loop, which doesn't seem very long. So if we increase this to say 30,000, it should be three times longer. Let's see. Okay, you, it's hard to tell, but that was three times longer. Let's try this. Let's go up to 50,000, or maybe we'll try 100,000. Okay, so that's 100,000 loops. It should be 10 times longer than our initial one. And you're going to see something strange here. Okay, it never stops. So this never stops, and it's not because of our, well, it is because of our code. There's not a problem here. There's a problem here. If we look at the integer, uh, where is it? Come on. 
we look at the integer in the Arduino reference, we see that the integer and in Arduino Unos have a range between negative 32,000 and positive 32,000. Um, for the Arduino Due and for the Teensy uh, microcontroller boards, which I prefer to the, to the Uno, this, this won't be a problem because in those, the integer is quite a large number. But the integer for an Arduino Uno is pretty small, okay? It only goes up to 32,000. So any number bigger than this is going to roll over down to the negative 30, 32,000, and it will never reach a bigger number than this. For example, our code, which uses an integer value, so counters an integer, so anything greater than 32,000, which 100,000 is, will never, it will never reach there. So it will continue to loop and loop and loop and loop and loop, and counter could never get to 100,000 because it's bigger than the value that integer data types allow. So it's an easy fix. We can just change this to a long, okay. uh, which is a, a longer data type, surprise, surprise, and it allows us to have numbers that are much bigger than, than 32,000. If you have the Arduino Due or the Teensy, which is what microcontroller I really prefer, then integer is fine. Integer goes up to huge numbers, but on the, on the Uno, it only goes up to 32,000. So here we go. So now let's see what happens when we run it for 100,000 times. Oh, hey, it helps if you put the device back in. Again, I'm plugging the positive into A0 and the negative into ground. Let's run it one more time, 100,000 times. Okay, so that's 10 times longer than what it was to begin with. All right, so that's one way to do it. The problem is you don't know what's really happening inside of this. If we were to, pr to print the value, for example, then this would take a lot longer to run. So if you want this to run for a certain amount of time, we need to go on to method number two. But do you see, see how this works? Okay, let's look at method number two. All right, so I'm gonna come up here to the loop function. I'm gonna method two, and I'm going to comment this out. All right, so for, what's the best way? So for method two, what I wanna do is I want to come into the setup, and I just want to show you what we're going to be looking at here, okay? So let's just do a serial.println, okay? We're just going to print it once, right, because it's in the setup function. And let's just print the word, or not the word, but the, the value from the millis command, okay? I'm going to put some space in there so you can see what's happening. So these two outer braces, or are, are parentheses, belong to the serial.println, and this guy here is the millis function, okay? And this prints the, the amount of time since the code started running. Okay, prints the amount of time in, can you guess what the units are? In milliseconds, of course, because of the millis. All right, there's also a micros, so if you wanted to figure out the amount of time running in micros, you can, um, you can turn this, you could print that guy as well. All right, so let's see what happens when we, when we run this. Uh, I'm going to comment out both of my calls here. I just want to run this to set up. And let's open the serial monitor and see what happens here. Okay, so it immediately, it did this, and then it set up the pin mode, and then it, it immediately printed the, uh, the value from the, from the millis, which is essentially zero milliseconds, because this happens so fast. And if we put like a little delay in here, delay of 500, maybe half a second delay, 500 milliseconds, right? Okay, so it counts, and it's it's not exactly right, but it's, you know, 499 is close to 500. So so the time between it start started running and the time here is about 499 or 500 milliseconds. The timer is not great on Arduino, but, but it's okay. All right, so now how can we use this? All right, so we can grab the current time with millis. All right, so I think we're, I'll leave it, it's fine. Let's, let's look at method two. We only have a few minutes. Let's take a look at it. All right, so we come up with a, uh, this probably should be a long, now that I'm thinking about it. 
because this millis could run over. Okay. So we grab our start time, which is given to us by millis. So this grabs the current elapsed time in milliseconds since the start of the co code started running. Okay. And then we set up a duration. So how long do you want this to run? How long do you want the, the thing that you're doing to, to run for it? So this is, let's just say, a thousand milliseconds or one second. So then let's print the start time just to, to display it. Okay. And so this is a conditional expression that you can use. So now you grab the next, you know, you grab the new time, the current time. And if that current time is less than the start time, which is what it was when it started before the loop, plus the duration, okay, then this will be true, and this will run, okay? And as soon as the current time given to us by Millis is greater than the start time that we had, that we grabbed before, right, as we entered method two, plus the thousand, plus our duration, if it's greater than that, then this will be false, and it will kick out of the while command and turn off our buzzer, okay? So here it will run for pretty true to one second. So let's see what happens here. Are we running method two? We are. Let's see. Hmm. Well, that seems to be a problem. Okay, so we ran it. Nothing happened. I hope my students found the problem as I was typing it in. Way up here, method two, of course, needs a semicolon. Otherwise, it won't run it. Oddly, it doesn't give you an error, which is kind of funny. Okay, so it ran it for 1,000 milliseconds. Let's try for 3,000 milliseconds and see if that works. Okay, and then let's try it for, I don't know, 30 milliseconds. Let's see if we can hear that. A little, little bit. Okay, so if you wanted to, for example, you could do something like this. You could say long end time. Maybe this is better. End time equals the start time plus the duration. Okay, so maybe this is this is a, maybe a, a, a simpler way of thinking about it. Okay, and then perhaps what we can do is we can we should really echo all of our values. Okay, let's see if that, if that gives us a better time. And then now we can say if millis, which is the current time, is less than end time. Maybe this is a better, better way of looking at things. So maybe we make this be, uh, I don't know, 300. So let's see how this improves things. We upload the code, open the serial monitor. All right, so we get a start time, we get a duration, we get an end time. All right, and so we can see that when the current time millis reaches the end time, it will uh, no longer make the buzz high, or rather it will jump out of this loop and will jump down to this line 49, which makes the buzzer go low and turns it off. All right, so let's see if... Um, if we can't maybe change the duration, I don't know, to 3,000. Let's see what happens there. All right, so now it stays on for a certain amount of time. So no matter, no matter what goes on inside the while loop, it will continue to check the current time and uh, then stop after after an elapsed time of our duration. So that's kind of cool, and it's pretty handy for a lot of different uh, applications. So hope this was useful. 